the process of our mead is getting along. We're making our honey, we're making some nice sweet mead this time. This is um, it's just going to decanter it so that it can chill out a little bit before we bottle it next week. So we thought we'd show you that piece of this excitement. And anyway, I'm sitting here halfway down the stairs. I feel a bit like Herbert the Frog. You know, what was that crazy song he sung? Halfway down the stairs. I'm not really up and I'm not really down. I'm only halfway on the stairs. But anyway, I think that's how that went. <laughs> I'm sure there's someone else out there that was a bloody awesome Muppet fan that wouldn't know how it really went. <laughs> Just wondering if I've got a glass down here to give it a try. I might have to go. Oh yeah, I can see one behind the beard here. We're gonna give it a track. <sighs> give it a little taste test. <laughs> I don't normally sit my jug on here so I don't get too many air bubbles in the pot. Anyway, this is a cool little little bloody um, chaff cutter from back in the day. I don't actually know what it's doing down my cellar, but it's kind of cool. Feed the chaff in there and bloody hell it'd be a small horse. <laughs> What's a chaff cutter? Oh, well a chaff cutter, well this is a very small version of a chaff cutter. Back in the day you'd have a bale of straw and you'd pull it apart into biscuits and, in, and of course straw is like, you know, that long roughly, and then it's got the little head on, but generally it's pre-straw, like as in it's still got the grain in it, it hasn't been ripped, but anyway, it's turned into hay, and it's long. And so then if you're making chaff, you would lay the strips, obviously this is only a junior burger model of it, but you'd lay the strips in this big chaff cutter, and then there'd be a big electric motor driving this bit, or a diesel motor back in the back further, or a bloody donkey, I suppose, back in the back, back, back further than before that. And you've got these nice little blades here, and then as it goes around, and you've got a little roller that feeds the chaff through, so the chaff gets sucked into there, and you're standing here basically, normally if you're in a big version, you're standing here and you're feeding the chaff in, and then you have a big blooming bag and a bucket or whatever it wants to get fed into, and then you mix the straw pieces with your grains or your horse nibbly bits or whatever else, but well, usually it was horses like chaff, and so it was, yeah, it was to feed you feed your horses with the mixture of that and grain and molasses and or the cows. Quite often in back in the day they used to have the, you know, when you see the dairy cows and they've got their head in the baskets, they used to make chaff for them to feed on. And yeah, so anyway, that's a mini version of a chaff cutter. The lad's so intrigued, do you want me to go and get a bit of grass and we'll show you how it really works? This is my attempt at a hay bale. We ain't got any hay where we live in at the minute, so this is just a bit of grass. All else fails, we'll use some cardboard to demonstrate. We might make a bit of a mess. A bit stiff that bit, but it should work. I don't know, we'll see. This is not what it's actually meant to be doing. <laughs> uh, anyway, so you load your straw in like that. Obviously this has been driven quite well. we were cutting up so it smells rather yummy. <laughs> so what you had then was chaff for the, for the stock. This little dude here was chaff for a guinea pig or a rabbit or some shit, but <laughs> same concept and a big, and a big chaff cutter and obviously the you know, bigger bits, but this is a little chaff cutter. So I honestly don't know exactly what you would have done for it, but I'm assuming it would have been for your rabbit. Yet another history lesson here on the Bush Bee Man. Hell, yeah, well, that's a distraction, isn't it? <laughs> Back to what we really came down here to do. <laughs> anyway, we'll just take our plug out. <laughs> She's looking a bit dark. But... <sighs> and we're just going to stick it into a different tub, but I was just looking at my other tub. I think I better give that a bit of a rinse out. Because I do have another... Oh, I know where my other... My other proper brew pot's up in the blooming outside room full of honey waiting to make a kick-ass dry mix of this mead madness. I think we better have a taste of this crap and see what it tastes like. Let's see what we've got in here, shall we? Mmm. It's very nice and sweet. The wife won't like that. 
because she likes her wine a bit dry, so that'll be the next one we make, but I don't mind. I mean, a bit of, don't have to, you know, how you mix bourbon and lemonade. That's why you can just make your own without mixing it with anything. I think that's coming along nicely, but I don't know. I mean, I'm not really sure where the bead, I suppose. Depends on which one to read, whether how mead is now clear it's meant to be, but anyway, that's why we're going to decanter it so it can actually have a little bit of time to chill out in a different pot and then we'll come back and hopefully it'll be a bit clearer and then I'm assuming when it sits in the bottle all the stuff will set to the bottom and you'll have a bit clearer drink but if not it'll be dark sweet mead wine <laughs> after all that distraction I don't even know if this is going to be the right size drum anyway oh fuck hang on no, I'll, just, I'll just take my chaff gutter away <laughs> Maybe I'll change the plan and put on a bar. <laughs> <laughs> that looks really bloody safe, doesn't it? <laughs> put a little bit of this in here. I've changed my mind because the thing is you don't want to get too much air in that pot because then it could sour the wine. So I think I'm going to rinse a hose off and stick a hose on this and decanter it that way. So. <sighs> Is there on pot? Probably will get my siphon hose and we'll use that. <laughs> okay, so anyway, you don't want to get too much air in your bottom pot. So you want to just Okay. That will go. So hopefully it doesn't all end up on the floor, otherwise that'll be sad. The reason we're transferring this into this pot is because in here you've got all the sediment and all the stuff and all the crap that's in the bottom of this pot and so if we take that off and we put it in here then that will calm down and settle a little bit and some of the more of the crap can sit under the tap and so when we take the mead off and bottle it it won't have so many sediment in it if you were really fancy you could have yourself a little spin sieve thing we did like they do at the wineries but of course you know we're in the bush bee man cellar, let's not be carried away. I'm a bit of a drinker, but you know, I don't actually have my own winery. Although, having said that, I did have a crack at making some port. So I don't know, maybe maybe since we've got distracted and we've been chaff cutting and all sorts of other stupid shit, maybe we'll have a glass of port together. What do you reckon? Right, that's that bit done. Turn that off. You don't want all that crap. We tip that out of there, we tip that up there. <sighs> Radio, 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 radio. Oh shit, everywhere we've got a mess. We'll slap the lid on that one. <laughs> so they're little wine flies trying to have a feed. Those little wine flies are little buggers. They'll get in there and then they, I don't know what they do, but I reckon they might fart in your wine because it makes it stink and it makes it taste like crap. So this is what we're trying to get out of the pot. So if you have a look in here, these are the bits of extras that we added. A bit of thyme and a bit of lemon and a few bits and pieces of citrus to give it a bit of zip. So we'll get rid of that. We'll go and wash that one out. And then I'll be able to start my other one that I'm doing. And we'll put that up on the thing. Oh, God. Put our little air seal back in so to keep the wine flies out. And now the other naughtinesses. Look at them all, little beasties. Get the bunny into the can of Mortine. I think the Mortine ran out today down here somewhere. But anyway, I'll give them another spray later. So anyway, that can sit in there, and then we'll keep an eye on it and see what the bubbles are doing. And if it chills out, we'll decanter it and stick it in some bottles. And then apparently you've got to wait six months, but I have a sneaking suspicion some of it might get nibbled on before then. But anyway, since this episode ended up running a little bit longer than we'd expected, and we're down the cellar and it's knock off time, and what the hell, I might as well have a little glass of port. Would you like a glass of port? <laughs> this is very high tech. <laughs> The mead's got some fucking fizz in it. Uh, actually, <laughs> none of that was actually planned. But 
the good part about the fact that we have just had that little eruption or explosion or calamity, what a waste, is to explain to the young fella what the hole is in the middle of the cellar floor, you see? The shit drains to the hole, and then hopefully you can mop it up. Oh. Bloody hell. At least the wife's got home so I can wash my own socks so I don't smell like beer when I cry them into bed. <sighs> Would that be on the epic fail list, I reckon? <laughs> anyway, I'm supposed to wrap this up at the moment, so I'm gonna sit on that couch over here. Cool, I reckon, even though this wasn't an episode that became an episode, and I've gotta go up and wash my bloody leg off, because that's all covered in my famous mead beer. Well, actually, I don't know, maybe I could suck on that bloody thing. That would make, hell, that'd be a whole nother episode, me sucking on the bottom of my jeans. Anyway, here I am, sipping on my port, and I'm just chilling back here and I'm thinking at the end of a bloody another hard day of filming, you wouldn't believe how blooming intense this is to film this show for you guys. I get quite bloody exhausted afterwards, but it's really cool fun and I'm having a good time and thank you guys so much for on your Patreon support because it means a lot to us and encourages us to keep going and having a good laugh with you. I hope you're having a good laugh along with us. <laughs> so yeah, here's to you. Get some in you.